afternoon and welcome to Sports Train. We have a very impacting one hour for you. My name is Astil Ren and my fellow host is Riza Abbasali. We are going to take you through, as we promised before, this Sports Train will be going, will be coming right through this Twin Island state. And I will tell you something. While, we, while the train was in central Trinidad, I noticed someone, a football legend, a football icon. He boarded the train, Reza, as Reza observed also with me. And he has decided to come down to our studios uh, in Digo Martin. And he, he has also written a book. And he will tell the story why he wrote the book and tell his entire story from the beginning to the ending. So stay tuned for that from this sporting icon, this football legend. I will give you a hint. He's known as the Kaisoka man. So if you, if you go back in history, you will know whom I am speaking about. But before I hand it over to Risa, I would like to acknowledge our sponsors. Blazer Sports Bar, thank you so much. Docs Engineering Works Limited and Royals Publishing Company Limited. Thank you all so much for being a part of this program. We are so indebted to you all, and you all are so generous to show your commitment and your confidence in such a program. So Risa, let's hear about your thoughts about this legend who boarded the train in central Trinidad. Oh yes, uh, good evening sports fans from here out at our live studio here in Digo Martin, Astel. You know, it was 10 years ago I met this man. And now it's 10 years later, I've met him personally again. Of course, we'd have been in contact from time to time. But 10 years have gone so fast. TT Hall of Famer, 1989. A Shokonia Silver Medalist, 1989. A legend of TNT football. So stay tuned to this fine gentleman coming up in our second half. Yes, and he falls under where are they now? I will not, I mean, mm. just to mention where are they now, and you put him alongside, I mean, this man is tremendous. He is, he is a sporting icon. He's bigger than life. Mm. He's what I will describe Mr. Football in Trinidad and Tobago. He's a part of a great legacy. He's one of the great ones that we have ever produced in this country, Riza. Definitely so. And we look forward to his interview later on to the show. Well, let's um, start with our items on top of the program. Um, we have, um, we just want to say, as tell us that um, Bravo scored 200 um, um, back to back in the in the Leeward Islands match. Zimbabwe today, the second test match started. Yes. And um, Zimbabwe were all out for 115. Godagish Moti, 7 for 37. And the West Indies, 133 for 4. The end of today's first day play with Myers and Chase not out. But um, congrats to Moti. Yes, indeed. Moti, I mean, he is a very, very good spinner. And it tells me that once a wicket is spinning on the opening yeah. day, it tells me that this test match is not going beyond three days. Because once you get bowled out for 115, it means that you are on the back foot from the start of play. And it means that the wicket is spinning and spinning tremendously. It will only get worse and worse, as they say in cricket in terms. Yes, yes. Well, you remember the first test that was drawn, and uh, that was a big, big event for uh, the son of the legend, Shiv Narayan Chandapal, Tej Narayan Chandapal. In the first innings of West Indies, 447 for six. Tej Chandapal scored 207 not out, only in his third test match. And of course, the Buffett and um, Tej broke all sorts of records, including a 33 year old record by, set by Desmond Haynes and Gordon Greenwich way back, I think, in 1990 versus England. They put on 336 for the first, in, um, the first opening partnership. I still that is unbelievable. Unbelievable, eh? unbelievable in these times <laughs> of West Indies cricket. When you have two young men, I mean, putting on so much runs and piling on the runs. I mean, Zimbabwe, let's face it, is not as form formidable as the other countries, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka. But 336 is 336 runs. you got to spend time in the middle. Yes, actually, it's the ninth highest opening part partnership in the history of Test cricket which started way back, I think, in, what, 1877, Australia versus England. Well, we have a two-minute clip on Tage. Um, this, this, this clip or interview took place after the Australian Test Series, but before the Zimbabwe Test Series. Let's have a look. Tage, firstly, I want to ask you, what was the feeling like receiving your Test cap from Brian Lara? Well, you know, it's a special feeling, receiving your cap, and from the legend himself, it's even better. What did he say when he handed you that cap? 
he said he was there when my dad made his debut and um, he think, think he would be proud right now watching watching on the game and seeing me receive my cap. And just as you mentioned your dad, coming through the system, how did you deal with the pressure of being Shiv's son? But you know, it's something people always talk about. So I just try and um, be myself. Can't can't be him. I could only do what I can do. And yeah, be me. In terms of your batting style, a lot of people say that you're similar. You take your time. Is that his influence shining through, or is that just something you develop throughout your career? My grand I started training with my granddad when I was little, so he always that kind of guy. He just instilling you don't give your wicket away, and you could only get runs in the middle, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think it started with my granddad. And I know that you've done a bit of training with your dad as well. Mm -hmm. Is that the same type of idea that he tries to instill in you, or what is his coaching style? Yeah, well. Um, since he came, well, he was living in the U.S. a bit, and then in Guyana. Well, now he's back in the U.S., but at the time when he was in Guyana, we would train together. So, yeah, basically, some of his teaching and batting style kind of rub off a bit. Right, uh, Shiv, uh, as in Shiv Chandapal, Dave Chandapal, son of the legend, Shiv Chandapal, wanted to, he wants to, I mean, chart his own course, um, Aston. I mean, I mean uh, a lot of pressure in him, you know, based on his relation. Uh, definitely, because yes. this young man will come into, is coming into test cricket with a lot of responsibility, and he has a lot of pressure because, as, as we were talking of set before, and as we have our football legend, he will tell you that his son also faced the kind of, serious pressure from the fans out there because they, they expect the son to be as good as or better than the father. And in this case, Shiv Chandapal, Tej has a big, big, big boots to fill. Definitely. All right, good luck to Tej. Yeah, he scored 36 today, but I mean, I'm sure we're looking forward to even greater things. Um, okay, let's move on quickly to um, relay festivals. Uh, the first relay, secondary school relay festival since 2017. And my colleague um, Astel has an interview with Joseph Brewster, the president of the Secondary Schools Track and Field Association. And that festival took place Thursday last at the Hazley Crawford Stadium. Astel, let's hear. Oh, I've been talking about talking about that relay festival. It was an historic event. It's the first time, the first time in the history of the Relay Fest among secondary schools is that there were regional comp competition, regional athletes came in. And it took a lot of doing. It took some work. And hear what Jonas Brewster had to say, how much work went into, into this program to have it, it came off on Thursday at the Hazley Crawford Stadium. So thank you so much, Mr. President of the Secondary School Track and Field Association. I'm, I'm talking to Joseph Brewster. Mr. Brewster, welcome to Sports Train. Let's talk a little about this historic event that started, that uh, you were launched on Thursday, and it, uh, yesterday, Wednesday, and it got started on Thursday. Uh, uh, let's talk about this uh, historic event. What is your take on this whole thing, seeing that you have worked extremely hard at such a project? Well, um, I mean, we're very happy that we could uh, put on such a project. It has now become regional. You know, it's a, it was a normal relay festival. And it has now become regional. And so um, because of that, it, people are expecting that it should stay that way. You know, it is a lot of hard work, but it is what it is. How much work went into to, 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 to convince uh, the regional countries to send their athletes to come to Trinidad to compete? <laughs> well, um, there's a, a project that started with the Prime Minister's initiative, and it's a collaboration with Jamaica. I said it really started off with that collaboration taking place, and we extended it to Guyana and Barbados, and they accepted. And so, because the Prime Minister spoke, it wasn't too much to convince Jamaica to be here. And of course, Guyana and Barbados recognized it that, hey, this is an opportunity for their own athletes. They took advantage of it. 
how do you see this improving the quality of our track and field in the country? Well, definitely. Um, you see, once you put up, sometimes we, we work in a vacuum and we believe that, listen, what we're doing is, is good. But when you have something like this and you pit yourself against the Caribbean, then you realize where your pitfalls are, where you're good, where you can get better. And that's, that's the important one. Where could I get better? And better men would come um, in the schools. You know, people in coaches in your schools, programming in your schools, and give those programs and coaching support. That is where your better men will come. Uh, during the launch of of the of this event, um, the the education minister or the minister of sport and community development pointed to there is a belief that the the bridge between track and academics is not there at all. Um, what is your take on that? No, I don't. I don't. I don't need a point to, be, to that. What they would have alluded to is that a strengthen of that bridge. You know, getting that bridge um, nice and strong, and that's the problem. You know, when you when you get that bridge nice and strong, that's the issue, right? Um, there's a a fallacy, a thinking among people that you can't do sports and academics well, but that has been debunked long time ago. So what we want to do now is to continue to debunk that, break it down, and show that our athletes can be both mentally and physically, athletically bright. And, and that's the key. Okay, so let's wrap up this interview, Mr. Uh, Brewster. Um, you have been in the vineyard working for so long. I mean, uh, are we going to see you around? Because I, I know you just continue like a, you, you like old man river. You keep on just doing your best more and more. Uh, um, how long will we uh, can we expect to see Joseph Brewster continuing to work hard in the vineyard to produce top athletes? Well, I I don't know how long God has for me, but once He gives me life, He gives me strength, He gives me energy. The motivation is always there because my motivation are the students. My motivation is to see young people achieve, and once God gives me that life and that strength, whether I'm president or not. I will be there doing the part like that I can do. All right, well, thank you so much. And do in the, I, I do hope that the event comes up to be very successful and you will continue to, 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 to go from strength to strength. Thank you so much, Joseph Brewster. Thank you very much, Austin. All right. I mean, that was Mr. Joseph Brewster, president of the Secondary School Track and Field Association, talking about the first Relay Festival since 2017. Now, you know, Astel. We had, of, I think he may have mentioned it, we had, the, of course, the appearances of regional schools. Exactly. Um, Jamaica, mm. um, uh, Michael, um, Guyana, Guyana schools, and St. Michael's School of Barbados. Barbados, and correct. And that would, correct. of course, enhance the competition overall. Yes, and I must add that the winner overall for QRC College, Queen's Royal College, they took the top prize uh, but, uh, after Thursday's competition. They were the ones that, that, that won the overall prize throughout Excellent, so, excellent. Yep. And one thing I want to note also is that um, the, the, the schools themselves, the Jamaicans, they did not contest the finals per se, but they ran, you know, the, the, you know, to show their work. Yes. You know, to kind of, you know, mm. I mean, you know, I mean, a Jamaican track team is a top, I mean, a top, a top team. A top team, correct, yes. yes, yes. Uh, All yeah. right, so what we have right now, um, Astel again, you know, is a big, big occasion for Mr. Kelsey Daniel, who okay. broke the indoor record long jump of 7.99 meters to replace the 1999 record of 7.89 meters established established by wendell williams he yes. accomplished defeat at the new mexico collegiate classic in new mexico on the 3rd of february exactly i mean we must say con congratulations to this young man because a, a 24 year old record Right. Uh, Wendell, the plane Williams, or the helicopter, uh, they call him because he used to fly through the air. Well, right. the, record, the records are made to be broken, and his record went tumbling down. And, and I'm, I'm sure Wendell Williams is a proud man today, and he's very happy for the young man, uh, seeing that he has gone past his record. And that leap that, that uh, Kelsey did, he came second in the competition. And he also, he was ninth on the IWF 
uh, track and field um, ratings throughout the world. So it was a tremendous accomplishment for this young man called Kelsey Daniel. We keep our eyes on him, though, uh, and see how he progresses because the Olympic Games is just around the corner. Yes, he was second behind the Jamaican Wayne Pinnock. That's right. Who jumped 8.10 meters. Correct. And the, the name Pinnock, uh, uh, <laughs> I remember that on the cricket field I mean, yes, years ago. Yes, yes. So, uh, so it is a sporting family. name. Yeah. It has a, yeah. a sporting background. So, all right. So let's take our first break. And when we come back, Rising Stars, stay tuned to IETV. to own your own home but worried about time money and construction we handle it all with docs you can sleep in your dream make a down payment of 100k or 150k and we'll build a two or three bedroom home on your unused land a home is an investment into your future so let's help you invest wise invest well payment plans available we're only a call away Welcome back to IETV Sports Train. And this, of course, is good to see our golden sponsors. Uh, Blazer Sports Bars, Doc Engineer Works, and Royal's Publishing Company Limited. And, of course, stay tuned. We have that $300 cash price coming up. So we're now looking at rising stars. And we have a 20-year-old Maria Francis Serrant, a midfielder, U.S. college team at Corbin Warriors in Salem, Oregon. A netballer in the past, a track and field, a swimmer, all rounder in terms of you know her sporting accomplishments. Under 15, Trinidad and Tobago footballer, under 18, under 20. Uh, student of Diego Martin Central Secondary School. Exactly. Astel, you got it right. Correct. I mean, she, <laughs> her mother is training, her father is training, and she's also training. And she came through the ranks, and she was also nominated or named the TTFA Junior Women Football of the Year. So let's hear what Maria Sarant has to say because we talked to her. She's right now, she's based in Texas. So we spoke to her and get her thoughts about how football is going, how she's going, and how she feels about the award which was given to her. Maria, tell me something. Your mother is training, your father is training, you are training. How did you, how did you manage to, to uh, how you managed to be playing for the, for this national team? How were you spotted? Uh, I started playing for the U15s. Mm -hmm. And since then I played U17s and then I played the U18 um, Olympic um, futsal team in 2018 and then I I played I actually played seniors before I played U twenties in twenty twenty. And then I played seniors again in U twenties last year. So I just came up playing since. Oh you you came through the ranks. So, so that is yeah. the, that's a very, very good sign. It means that you went through the stages. Um do you enjoy playing football? Of course. It's <laughs> definitely my passion, my biggest love at at the moment and you know, I don't think I could ever see myself not playing it. Even when I'm old, I'll probably be coaching or something. I mean, you are now 20, 21, well, 21 coming up. Um, any members of your family were involved in football before, have a, had a sporting background and love for football, you, know, you have just expressed? Well, yeah, my brothers played um, football, but they didn't, like, pursue it or continue it. I think my brother, Matthew, he played in at, um, what do you call it? Bill in Barbados, he played oh, at yeah. university, and I think my other brother Christopher, he played um, for Tampa, but oh, nobody see. else really played, yeah, nationally or anything. He actually, Matthew actually played in the Ascension League last year. But right. Other yes. than that, yeah, he, he has 
the name is the name uh, I have, have uh, I came across the name uh, um Sorant in um in, in one yeah. of the kind of discourse the the, um, the the teams. But tell me something um yeah. what about you no know, you know you are playing for Corbon um university. No, I'm playing for WT. Oh WT, okay. Uh, I, mean, yeah. I was reading your 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 um a recent thing of yours and but tell me how is the game uh, how are you progressing out there? Um, well, I mean, when I came out here in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, um, for sure, like, well, I came out when it was during COVID, actually, so I didn't have my first season. We had the first season in spring, which didn't really count, but um, when I came out, you know, you could definitely see the difference in mentality, the difference in, like, um, playing styles and stuff from a Trinidadian and American standpoint, and, you know, just the difference in, like, drive, like, who plays football because they like it or love it and who just plays because you know it's college so it's been at Corbin it was good you know and then I just decided that I wanted more of a challenge I guess so I switched over and transferred last year here to WT and it's been nice playing you know here at WT the football is definitely like you know much better and it's I mean whereas it's not like the same as the national level it's still it's still pretty good to you know pick up different play styles and more like knowledge on the game and stuff. Yeah, I mean you are midfielder, so it means that you play a very important role on the on the on the on the on the field on how things uh, uh, how things unfold. Because I I I I see that you play for you are, having come through the ranks, you were exposed to all the different age groups in this country, and plus you are playing. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh, tell me about. Uh, are you, have you been scoring goals or, or have you been assisting or what's been happening with you? <laughs> I actually, I play forward. I'm a forward and a wing. I don't necessarily play like attack in mid. Yeah. So, yeah, I do score goals. Last season, I scored 17 and I think I assisted four. That's how I got those um, awards for offensive player and player of the year and newcomer of the year. And I also got those awards for um, at Coburn too. Oh, so. I think that's what I like to do. I like to definitely score goals, you know. I mean, sometimes I don't, but it's okay. I see, I see, I see. But tell me, you have you were you were you were you were voted sports junior sportsman of the year by the TT TTFA. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Because how, how how do you accept that? I mean, last year definitely was a roller coaster for me, football wise, and also trying to balance. Um, like academics like school and stuff and also with the with me like transferring the whole entire year was just a long like process so i when i could have i really tried to like get my time on the field outside of like the tournaments and stuff so i think me definitely setting my goals and putting any work on my own it showed in the award because i did put my best foot forward and have a really positive mind for the senior tournaments, U20 tournament, and then when I came out here to um, transition into WT. So I think it was a pretty nice award to, you know, just show like my hard work and, you know, my efforts of the whole of last year. So it was, I mean, it was a bit shocking kind of, but you know, it was pretty nice to, to receive it. Yeah, that was Maria Francis Sarant at, um very promising youth football. Actually, she's studying kinesiology and wants to work in sports psychology and therapy. And um, it's a form of therapy aims to detect and correct imbalances that may relate to stress, nutrition, and nutrition or minor injuries. So let's now go quickly now to our sports trivia question. Our sports trivia feature brought to you by Royards Publishing Company Limited. All roads leads to Royards uh, Publishing Company with books designed uh, for both primary and secondary schools. Parents, students, and teachers are welcome at RPC, Makoya Industrial Estate, number 7A, telephone 645-0423. Um, you can also get the Shiv Chandapal um, autobiography right there also, Shiv Chandapal's latest book, 645-0423. So let's see the photo. Um, do we have it, um, Darren? All right, um, call in now and identify this famous West Indian cricketer. Um, the lines are 223-1601.
cash price of $300. Good to see RPC. So, Astel, we know this gentleman very, very, very well. Exactly. I mean, he was known as a pace like fire. I think he wrote that book, Pace Like Fire. I mean, when you, when you, when you looked at him and, you, and I, I saw batsmen during his era, they would have been happy days. Most of them had nightmares facing this, this man because even the night before, when you walking out to, to face this man, it has to you had to be a bit there had to be butterflies well, we give it, we more give, than that. We give it so much hints. You know there was a league in his name back in the seventies, right here in Trinidad. Uh, actually I played in that league. You I mean, see I, yeah, I played in a league and yes. coming to the end of the league, I mean uh, and that is where I met most of the national players. I played against all the all the national players, I mean from uh, from from Larry Gomes to Gus Logie to to, to to Randy, uh, to um, Roland Sampat, all these fellas I play against. Harold Joseph, um, you, you name it, I played against all of them in his, in a name, in a league named after this man. So call in and please see if you can win $300. I Want mean, to see I, I, I. Publishing Company Limited. Correct. Well, you know, um, he was, you know, actually also I'm giving more hints. Mm. He was first West Indian to take a hat-trick in test cricket. Ah. Um, three wickets and three balls. Three wickets and three balls, I mean, that's... 1959 against Pakistan. That's, that's no easy, that's no easy feat, you know, I mean, that, 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 that. Three wickets and three balls, I mean, that, that you're playing against a small opposition. But during his era, he played against top players, I mean, and to really get a hat-trick, the first person to do it, he had to be on song on that day and bowling as quickly as he, as he did th throughout his career. 192 wickets between 1958 and 1969 was his test career. Correct, yeah. And, well, the, uh, and uh, uh, when you look at this man, he, he wasn't just a, a cricketer, he was a senator also. Oh yes, so oh my. He was the reverend. <laughs> Sports minister. <laughs> yeah, and, and he was also a, a reverend, a yes. man of the cloth. So, 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 so you understood what type of man he was. He was an all-around man. He was on the field, a cricketer, and off the field, he, he did other things. So, well, I think, I mean, we, we don't have any callers at the moment, so I think um, we've got to get our guests going. Yes. Um, so um, possibly next time. Um, let's take a break, and we'll have On Set Live, legend of TNT and world football. Stay tuned to ITV. Are you ready to own your own home, but worried about time, money, and construction? We handle it all. With Docs, you can sleep in your dream. Make a down payment of 100 k or 150 k and we'll build a two- or three-bedroom home on your unused land. A home is an investment into your future, so let's help you invest wise, invest well. Payment plans available. We're only a call away. My name is Riza Abbasali. My name is Astil Ren. This is Sports Train. Get on board. Join us every Sunday afternoon for a one hour long live program on ITV, your station for real sports. That's victory for the West Indies, and Sheldon Cottrell has done it. And we have some interesting features, such as great moments in West Indian cricket, rising stars. Where are they now? Our former sporting icons. Sports Rain on ITV. Don't miss it. Are you ready to own your own home? But worried about time, money, and construction? We handle it all. 
With Docs, you can sleep in your dream. Make a down payment of 100K or 150K, and we'll build a two or three bedroom home on your unused land. A home is an investment into your future, so let's help you invest wise, invest well. Payment plans available. We're only a call away. My name is Riza Abbasali. My name is Astil Ren. This is Sports Street. Get on board. Join us every Sunday afternoon for a one hour long live program on ITV, your station for real sports. That's victory for the West Indies and Shetland Cottrell has done it. And we have some interesting features such as great moments in West Indian cricket, rising stars. Where are they now? Our former sporting icons. Sports Train on ITV. Don't miss it. Welcome back to Sports Train, and we have promised you, we told you about this sporting icon, this larger than life figure. We have the man now live on set, and I will reveal him to you. He's Everett Gally Cummings, and this man has a story. He has written a book, and he has all his life documented. So, Risa, I would like to hand it over to you. Well, thank you so much, Astel. I mean, the legend himself. But before we talk with the legend, we had a winner of the $300 cash prize, Carlin Maharaj from St. Augustine, just as we went on the break. So, Carlin, we'll be in touch with you. And thank you so much, Royal's Publishing Company. Well, we have on set the man himself called Galientos, Gali <laughs> Cummins. Gali, I mean, the last time I saw you, of course, was 10 years ago mm -hmm. at the station down there in the bamboo. Yeah. And now I'm seeing you 10 years later. You're batting well for 74. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, but Gali, when you first stop, I mean, you wrote this book. I mean, it's the Gali Commons, the autobiography, the 60 year history of a TNT footballing treasure. I mean, quickly, um, I know you have answered it already. And I mean, why did you write this book at this stage of your life? I think I had a story to tell. And I think we have a lot of young players mm -hmm. who don't think that Trinidad and Tobago football as a history, right. and I think I, I had something to, talk to, to tell them, and uh, as you see, the book said that it's a 60 year yes. football uh, uh, treasure, right. right? And I have things to talk about from age three and four mm. up to present day. So the book is a very, very comprehensive, as, the, uh, as you see, how many chapters? Uh, yeah, 25. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and tell us quickly about the compilation of this book and the assistance that your son gave you. Well, um, yeah, uh, well my son, I think, who, who, who knows me better than anybody because yes. we, are, we are very close in the family. Mm. And he and my wife and my daughter, you know, they, yeah, Rene. they, they Rene sat down and, 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 and listened to my story. I mean, they, have, they listen to my stories every day, yes. so there was nothing new, but what they did, they did he, my son documented everything. He followed of uh, out of Trinidad, I will send voice in on the phone to him, whatever, mm -hmm. and he put it all together, together. And he did a fantastic job, as you see from the, the sort of review it got from, right, from right. top class people in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. so, and he has healed up to some days ago. He said to me, he said, this book is going to be, you know, go where it's supposed to go, into the schools. Right. Of Trinidad and Tobago, and this is exactly where uh, the sort of situations we've been having, the kind of problems we've been having with our youngsters. I think this book is a very appropriate yes. to be in schools at the time. Astel, the TNT Hall of Famer for 1989. Exactly, and Gali mentions a very important thing. He said the book received very, very good reviews, and I am looking here at uh, Debbie Jacob's review, and uh, when I read it, it told me this is Gali's story. I mean, it says Cummings' autobiography is a lesson on how success relies on passion and dedication. Because when I met this man, he has passion and dedication. It is a lesson that individuals can succeed even in a toxic, in a toxic environment. Uh, that 
sometimes seems bent on drafting ambition. So you see, I mean, Debbie Jacobs, I mean, she encapsulated Gary's whole life because from, from where he came from, he yes. came from, 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 from humble beginning, and he could have gone in any direction. But Gary decided that I am going the way of football, and that is where this man created a name for himself. He made a name for himself, and he set a standard that very few people could, could, could climb to that type, of, that type of heights. Exactly. Award-winning journalist, Debbie Jacob. And um, I have a quote here from Earl Lovelace, well-known playwright, a novelist, um, a serious participant whose football career has spanned an entire independence period he has left with us. Um, a wisdom he himself has lived. Fantastic reviews from all of these important people. Magali, let's start at the top because it's important to, uh, to let people know how you, how you know where you came from, and you know Don Donald Street, Melville Lane, close to the Queen's Park, Savannah, and all these people of outstanding background were part of your development. You know the Pat Bishops, you know the Peter Minchels, the Lord Cristo, the Michael Gustinis. Tell us about that. You know that that relationship you had. Well, you know, as a, as a child growing up on the, at the corner of Dundon Street and Melvin Lane, yes, right opposite where we lived, mm -hmm. was um, Marcus Minchel, Peter Minchel's brother. Oh, he I lived see. right there, and Marcus Minchel at the time was uh, the goalkeeper for Shamrock mm -hmm. at, in the first division football. So, so I used to see it on, on a daily basis, and also so his brother Peter, they all lived opposite us. And, and on the left hand side of Melvin Lane, where I lived, was was Olive Walk. Mm. That um, we know, um, yeah, play right there. You know, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. And, yes. and then, and then, and look a little lower down, down on the street near the J Street, yes. you had the Valdez brothers, oh, Mike the, and Peter, yes, yeah. yes, and yes. Up, up there, street, it, it had Ed Spinner, mm. who played for Shamrock and Castle mm -hmm, back in the mm -hmm. day when I was a child watching football. And as uh, I said, further down Melvin Lane, you had. Tranquility Boys School, which I attended, right. and also we had Balize House, mm. where Eric Williams would pass down Melville Lane right. to my street corner. And I, I used to be at the corner of Melville Lane, four years old, looking at, uh, you know, as we know him, the dog passing yes. in his yes. Yes. And he used to take his pipe and, and tilt it to me, yes, with, yes. Uh, uh, with an acknowledgement to me. And right. that meant so much to me to see this great man, our first prime minister. You know, saying hello to me in the morning, and uh, that friendship went until I was 20 years, uh, 19, 20 years playing with the national team, playing professional football. Yes. You know? And so, and then we had Mike Agostini who lived in Lower Down. We even had um, Tony Ferreira who lived on Down Street. He was mm -hmm. like a big brother, brother to me on the block. And also we had um, this we know um, saxophonist um, uh, um, Sel Duncan. Sel right, Duncan. right. Who also lived on, and I lived next door to Bertram Innes, who okay. arranged Calypso for Christo, my uncle. Yes. Great uncle. Um, Zandoli and, 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 and Faro. <laughs> Mighty Faro was always there recording tunes. As a matter of fact, I used to know more about Calypso than I knew my, my, my homework. At school, yes, at yes. Day. But the thing about what was nice is that my uncle, Christo, the Calypsonian, right. my, uh, my, my maternal grandmother's brother, when I go to, to visit her, at, she lived at Nelson Street. He was always strumming on a guitar, so I know all the calypsos and 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 and, and go to him in his plane at the street corner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some night, sometime before I go to school, I used to laugh. Yes. I used to listen to all these recordings and, and calypso music by Bill Tremendous. And so that is what what was sort of yeah, ingrained in me. Ingrained in you. Understand? Yeah. How you know the yes. guy so circle came up. Yes. So it came from my uncle Christo into Bertram Innes, and, and as I said, the football that was taking place at the grandson at that time, which was a stone throw away from where I live, mm -hmm. I heard the roar as a child from the crowd. When right. people like Matthew Nunes and Carl John Franco and, 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 and right. Edgar Espina and these guys, you know, scored a goal. So everything was just there. And after the game, what the most important thing, we have throws of people coming down down the street from yes. the Savannah. Um, so all that Great. was. Just playing well, let, well, let me ask you this, because I have noted the schools you went to, yeah. and uh, Richmond Street Boys, Tranquility, and then Fatima, mm -hmm. but you are all road sportsmen. I mean, I'm seeing here, you know, football, cricket, I mean, yeah, track, uh, and a track and field, 100, 200 meters, certainly that would have been ingrained in you as, a, I mean, to, to become a top-class sportsman. Yeah, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your, your days at um, 
at um, especially Fatima Intercall 1965 yeah, and all yes. those big mm -hmm. players. Mm -hmm. so, uh, when I went to Fatima, I was already playing to the national team. Yeah, but that's true. I was 15 years. Yes. I, uh, uh, I played to the national team 15, uh, 15. I went to Fatima 15 years. Yes. On a sports scholarship um, from Tranquility. And when I went to Fatima, I, I met all these guys. And you know, you were at the Duke Bridge, you found Kim Mahabir, all these people, and then Glenn Seeley. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as I said, uh, I went on to the secondary school national team for, uh, uh, again. Mm -hmm. and this is the, 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 the um, historic picture of the KC team. Oh, yeah, we we'll come to that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But as I said, um, so Fatima had won it yes. for 14 years. Mm -hmm. Against St. Mary's. And then St. Mary's. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I was the first person to, to uh, mm -hmm. the first Fatima boy to win a, 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 a right. intercall for them. And this was good. I see you. You have a picture of me when I speak for the Cosmos. Oh, Cosmos. New York. New York Cosmos. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. You met Pele? Oh, yeah. I met, Just before? Uh, no, I met, <laughs> I met Pele at, in Atlanta, 1968. Yes, yes. OK, yeah. good. Oh, this is the fourth medal year trophy there. You're right. Nice, nice. That's what the trophy used to be years ago. I see. Yes. Well, I still, you know, we're talking about, I mean, you know, we come into here as an early mm. beginner in terms of international football. I mean, from Paragon in 64, 66, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you had, um, you know, you, you what, as a youth footballer, you went to Jamaica in 66. Yeah, but you not with you, uh, secondary school. But tell us, I mean, Atlanta, New York Cosmos, Veracruz, how did you end up in Atlanta? Well, I think what happened, man, we, the national team, Trinidad and Tobago national team had a, a CONCACAF tournament in Jamaica. Yes. And at that time, a gentleman by the name of... Um, Derek Tomkinson, who went mm -hmm. to Jamaica from England, he went to Jamaica to coach football, mm -hmm. and he, he liked the place and he lived there. He was mm -hmm. scouting for players, but we mm -hmm. didn't know, and, and I, well, you know, myself and, and Leroy DeLeo and Roy mm -hmm. Antibal and Jan Stedman, mm -hmm. three Chin and a Fatima boy at the time, we, we got a um, contractual arrangement to, to go play in the state. Mm -hmm. the, the three of them guys, DeLeon, Artibal and Jan Stedman, went to New York Generals, mm -hmm. and I went to Atlanta Chiefs, mm -hmm. back, back in the Jim Crow law. Right, they Jim Crow. Jim Crow. Yeah, so yeah. I had the, the land know, of discrimination. Mm. That's it. So yes, what you yes. had, no, yeah, I was in a team where it was predominantly British players yes. from Ireland, England, and mm. Greece. And what happened is that we, we practiced and played games together, but mm -hmm. we still lived together. Oh, I see. Because of the segregation. The segregation, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Jim Crow laws. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. The Jim Crow, yeah. Area, black Correct, yeah. Yes, area. yes, yes, yes. And the, what was amazing in 1968, I think I. I, I, I must mention this. Yeah. Three significant things happened in Atlanta in 1960. Mm -hmm. we, won, we won the North American Soccer League, mm -hmm. we were the champs. Correct. In the Atlanta Chiefs. And also, Pele came to Atlanta with Santos in 1968 mm -hmm. to play an exhibition game. Right. And, and 20, 25,000 white people came out to see a black player. Mm. And at the same time, we had the assassination, assassination oh, Martin of Luther. Martin Luther yeah, in, yeah. in April of that year. Right, right. right. Those things I remember so, so clearly, hmm. especially that assassination. We were right. training at Atlanta Stadium at the time, mm. and the coach came and said, listen, you like to go training and go home because we have some problems. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, why? He said, they assassinated Martin Luther King. So okay. so, and we live in the black area, hmm. near Mohouse Moh Moh College and all these places, so we had to go through. Hmm. An environment where people are knocking in their cars to put their lights on. Mm -hmm. And we had to do that. We went home, and then I was staying at some people in Williamson's. And, mm. and when I went home, they were in chairs because they were Americans. And, 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 and I was fortunate enough to be invited to the funeral yes. by the, the, the vice president of the Atlanta Chief for Soccer Team, Mr. Dick Cecil. Mm -hmm. right. So I, was, I attended the funeral with a guy from Ghana called V.D. Evans. Right. Okay. Great man. Well, well, let's take a break and when we come back, we have, of course, the legend of TNT football himself, Everell Kali Cummings. Okay. Stay tuned to IETV. Are you ready to own your own home, but worried about time, money, and construction? We handle it all with Docs, 
you can sleep in your dream. Make a down payment of 100K or 150K, and we'll build a two or three bedroom home on your unused land. A home is an investment into your future, so let's help you invest wise, invest well. Payment plans available. We're only a call away. Welcome back to Sports Train. Uh, we are speaking with a sporting icon, a football legend, a, a larger than life figure, how we, how we like to describe him, Edward Gali Cummings. So we were talking about Gali before, and Gali was explaining to us. Reza, can you tell us something? Can you pick it up once more? Where oh, you yes. Well, continue? then, of course, you know, from Atlanta Chief. You spent about three years here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a pen, uh, yeah. 60, 67 to 72. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. So after that, you moved to New York Cosmos from in 72. 72. All right, I think you spent a year there. No, I spent two years. Two, 72, 74. Yeah. And then into Veracruz and Mexico. Mexico. Tell us about those two transitions. Well, what happened when I went to, um, I went to New York Cosmos, I, I, I had an injury. I was nursing an injury in 1970 with the court with the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. so, the, the coach had the chief at the time to, to stay home and nurse the injury. Mm. And I wanted a change from the kind of political climate to bear yeah. in, a, in Atlanta. Ah, uh, it was cold there? Not cold. The, the Jim the, or, or for the Jim Crow. Jim Crow. Yes, 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 yes. Conditions. Was yeah, the, yes. I, um, I, I got a trial with, um, with 1972 um, Cosmos. Right. Mm. And, but, but I have always been lucky with trials from primary school. Mm -hmm. I've never had a team I traveled out with who, who I didn't make. Mm -hmm. yes. So I went to the Cosmos and you know, I, I practiced with the guys. I knew some of them from back then. And I, 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 I stayed with the team. Mm -hmm. And that same year, I helped them to, to, to bring home some silver, which was the mm -hmm. North American Soccer League, um, league champions. And from there, mm -hmm. I went back to train that to play against Pele at the Oval. Oh, my. 1972, when, yes. when, when Dr. Eric Williams brought him to Trinidad and Tobago. So right. I met him a second time. Right. And then, as I said, we, we both did for the Cosmos. I got my, my I'm, I must boast about this, uh -huh. I got my championship trophy before Pele. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see. All right. All right. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. But let's, um, you know, there was a moment, um, 1973, just around what we call it, um, Astel, mm -hmm. with co-personality of the year. Correct. I yeah. think this experience, I mean, I mean, Gali, you got to tell us about it. Gary Sobers and Rohan Kanai. Oh, yeah, Rohan Kanai. Yeah, we lived that moment for us. I think uh, what happened is that after Haiti, I was the most valuable player of the tournament. Right, yes, that's and correct. I, I, was, I, I was also the footballer of the year for the mm -hmm. TNTFA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I got, I also received a, a Hummingbird gold medal. Oh, okay. At that, uh, around that time. But, uh, and then after that, I, 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 um, I would say, that Haiti experience, you know, mm. it was something that um, every time I go through it, you know, it, it, it's not painful, but it might be yes. all great, you know. Yes. Because as I said, when we went to Haiti, people get people get carried away with the way how we develop our we used to sing kaisos, mm -hmm. going to games and after games. Mm -hmm. And sometimes after the game when we went up, we, yeah. we had a nice performance, guys would be beaten bottle and spoon going back to the bus. Oh. So yes. it appears that people thought we were some kind of Fat match team. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, right, right. So that's the Kai Soka. Yeah. Yes, I, I remember I the song too, you know. Yeah. yeah. But we, as we on the 1973, yeah. um, the, that CONCACAF mm -hmm. Championship, yeah. the qualification for Germany. For Germany I yeah. think, you know, that's an important aspect of your history. Correct, yes. You know, so um, I and well, that, um, I think it was against um, Haiti. Um, that, 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 oh, that, yeah. that December 4th match. Mm -hmm. yes. But let's look at, I think we have a clip here, Gali, of that match against Mexico, um, 4 0, a big Mexican oh, side. Yeah. Give us a background of that. I think what happened is that um, we, 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 we had just um, had the problem with Haiti. Yes. And we had Mexico. Mm -hmm. And um, Players were crying. The stand, yeah. the stand, it, it was traumatizing that whole robbery mm -hmm. with the linesman, the ref blow for the goal, and we sent the ball to kick it off, and then the linesman stayed down there with his father. Yes. And the referee went back to him. That's the first time in history a linesman was overruling the referee. 
Yes, yes, I and, and, and so what so what happened is that when we play against Mexico, mm. we, we had something to prove. Mm -hmm. As I said, um, that Mexico situation was, it was funny, but yet it was a very serious one because yes. Mexico fired everybody. Mm. The, the, the football, the president of football, the, the, the coach, players, everybody, after the, uh, that loss in Haiti. Yes. So basically that Haiti tournament, uh, as I said, I won most valuable player of the tournament. Yes, and yes. And I had win sports personality the year. Correct. Right. All the awards was, to, and I think to date I'm the only footballer to have won that up. Um, yes. Footballer. Um, well, we have the we have that. I mean, about a minute, Castell. I'll clip yes. off. You know, your your two. It's in Spanish, of course. Oh, but okay, you know, okay, I mean, okay, but I you could translate for me too. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, director, could we have that clip of Gali Cummings' two goals against Mexico back in December the 14th, 1973? Um, Correct. Have a, let's have a look of that. Add that. Sorry. <laughs> Archival abre el balón sobre la llegada de Cummings. Cummings intenta pasar, no lo consigue. Viene otra vez recuperando Trinidad. El balón a Cummings, tira gol. Gol de Trinidad. Um, I read this, eh? your first goal. Mm -hmm. No, here, listen to this commentary, Astel. Mm. Cummings first goal, he fanned his right leg over the ball. Mm. <laughs> now no, show me what you mean, eh? You yes. can show me what you mean. No, show us what you mean, eh? Yeah. And flicked it around a Mexican de defender with the heel of his left mm -hmm. boot before ending up with the, with the shot on, on goal. Yeah, very clear. So that was part of your, your, your yeah. I mean, to say, your step repertoire? Over, yeah, step over, my step over move, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what happened? You fell up, bumps me off the ball, and I had to end it. But Lock have it, the ball came back up, out to me. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. put it away. This is the free kick. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, okay. We had a set piece, we had a set piece of that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I talk about that. That's looking at that. That's the check. You look at right in it. <laughs> yes. I think what happened is that um, they set about the wall, mm -hmm. and um, Tony Douglas and Archibald walked. Yes. Like they don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. They just yes. turned to me, and I hit it. Yes, yes. I see. So, I mean, I still, you know, the big names back in those days mm -hmm. David, Roberts, Brewster, Phillips, Steve Candley, or his band. Gally, how would you rate this team? I think that, I, to be quite honest, to you, not because I was yeah. a part of that team, I think that was the best, one of the best teams in Trinidad history. In the history of Trinidad? In the yes. history of Trinidad football. And you, you know why? Because it's, they had a togetherness in that team. It reminds me of the strike squad. Mm -hmm. They had a togetherness in that team. It's a, that players wanted to play with each other. Mm. They loved each other, you know. If you had a problem, I had a problem. You know? I and, see. And, and, and even when we lose a game, you know, the people on the bench wasn't wasn't mouth watching the players. Ah, they, yeah. they, they share in everything. You know, mm. if they came up the bench and they had a bad game, the other guy would say hard luck. Mm. It's not praying for a guy to pull a muscle so you could play this kind of, you know. As we see these things happening today. That team was very, very, very well put together, mm -hmm. and I think what happened, what, what was nice about the team is, is that even though with, with the injustice uh, it, it, that was meted out to us against Haiti, mm -hmm. we, stayed, we stayed together and proved that, that we were the best team in the tournament. And most of these players were locally grown? Lo locally grown. You're right. Uh, uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, that I mean, we were talking about that 73 uh, miss up, that, that, yeah. that, that incident. Now, tell us exactly who was the coach of that? Kevin Verity? Verity was the coach of the team. And we and lost the game. How many, how many goals did we score? How many goals four, did we score? Four. four. We scored four. And we lose the game two to one. Two to one. And, I mean, and, and, and that, that was a very controversial game indeed. Yeah, because that game was to, to take us to the, to the World Cup in Germany. Germany, right, okay. So we fast forward now, Gali. We're moving down now. Oh gosh, well I mean, we, 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 we had to go through we had to go through Kaiso Soccer now. Kaiso oh, right. Soccer now because <laughs> I, I now realize yes. uh, what Gali is talking, yeah. where the Kaisoka came from. Yes, Kaiso Soka. Yeah. yeah, from from that beginning, mm -hmm. from that from that background where Gali came from. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so So I mean we, we I mean the the, the strike squad um, on the road to Italy, Italy, is it? Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, Cali. I mean, it's all entrenched in the history of local football. Mm -hmm. 
um, November the 1999. But before we talk yeah. that, mm -hmm. when did you, when, how did you bring these players together? Well, what happened, I think, uh, I was uh, working at the Ministry of Sport at the yes. time as a specialist coach for football. Mm -hmm. I remember that. The successor work of what the director of sport, mm. he used to be, to go, be going to the airport to meet the players when they mm -hmm. returned from the games. And he, he told me, he said, Gally, I'm tired to us to lose games. I'm tired of mm. seeing heads down, mm. players coming in, some of them. A, matter of fact, a lot of players wanted to re re retire from the game. Oh, really? Okay, and okay. So he, he asked me what I thought if I wanted to coach the team. And mm -hmm. My hang up was the fact that I have always had problems with, you know, certain administrative people. Mm -hmm. And he said, listen, the Ministry of Sport will be backing you, mm -hmm. not the Football Association. So what was nice, my salary was paid by the Ministry of Sport. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was never, never paid by the Football Association. Mm -hmm. Always by the Ministry of Sport. So what right. happened? What happened is that um, he went to the players and he said, listen, I'm going to see if I've got a good coach here. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, uh, he introduced me to the players and, he, he, and, and I, I, met, I, I, I knew some of them. And I went to the team and, and it was, they, were, they were back from um, the Panam Games, the losing tournament. And all my energy, positive energy, I put into them. And from that, I, I, I never removed anybody. Right, but well, if a player wasn't good at the time, I put mm. him on the bench and bring him back when he. he, 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 he well, Gali, would you believe we just? I mean, I still we just the time we just about four four minutes again. Yeah, four minutes again. So, I mean, but so fast yeah. forward, eh? Um, I mean, we we remember November nineteenth. Mm -hmm. um, is it nineteen eighty nine? Eighty nine. Trinidad and Tobago needed just one point mm -hmm. loss against um, the U S. Yeah. And there's a story behind that uh, too. Story, yeah. You know, <laughs> but um, but 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 uh, but. You, I mean, how did the players really feel? I mean, at the at, at the end of that match, I think at the end, well, I thousands think, of people were I, down I there think, in the Crawford Stadium. I think, yeah, but yeah. I think what happened is that uh, the players uh, felt that de dejected in a sense because yes. they felt that they were not never treated. They were ah. a team going into a competition like that yes. should have been treated. Yes, the roads were blocked. People are rolling over oh, red carpets on the road, right? right. Mm. And we, they gave a holiday without contacting the technical oh, staff. Right, so right. People are uh, not trained that just once you give them yeah. something, and, and they won't pay. <laughs> they yeah, pay. Yeah. So the holiday was given. They never asked if what we thought. And as I said, when we got to the stadium, the people who are overselling at the stadium, the mm. crowd were coming towards us to get them in. Hmm. So oh. we, our captain, Clayton Morris, had to go on top of the bus and yes, say, listen, yes, we are here to play for you, we don't have more tickets. <laughs> so the tickets, and the, and the defense force had to help us in to the, to the, to the ground yes. with our bags and all this kind of stuff. Wow. Right. right. So it as was. I said, it, everything is it documented in yes. the book. In the book. Yes. 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 I mean, but what we want to ask you for, and we rarely run it all the time because we want you to autograph our books okay. too. What are you doing right now? Yes, Ask correct. Them? Correct. I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is Gali doing at this well, time well, of his career? Well, before the COVID, I, I had a, um, my Gali football coaching school mm -hmm. and, and, and given back to the community. Correct. You know? yeah. And um, well, with the COVID, we had to shelve that for a while. And, yeah. And, my son and I went into putting the book together. Yes, right, I see. So that book took about two years, something, and, okay. and also we had to do the, 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 the um, promotion and the mm. launch and all this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, as you will see, the, the book Correct. is yes. not very thin. Uh, yeah, is it a good size. Yeah, good yes. size. But Gary, will you be passing on all that knowledge, that skill, that dedication, that passion in which everyone is, is speaking about? Well, will you be getting back to pass on to the youth of the nation, the younger ones, those who are in primary school level? I mean, to, uh, because that is where you got to start, at the primary school level and take them to the secondary school and the national team. But the foundation, as you know, must be right. And the only man I, I think could do that job, one of the men in this country who can do that job, is Edward Gally Cummings. Are you well, going to be doing I, that job, To be Gally? quite honest, you hit the nail on the head uh, uh, still. I have uh, put them on many, many occasions with no, with no, no answer in return. And as I said, you know, I'm, I'm hoping yeah, that will let good sense prevail. And after this program, mm. you know, this, Gally, this, what, what's your what's your number where people can contact you at? Yes, the number is seven seven zero seven seven zero four seven one seven seven four seven one seven. Could contact him at that number. Yes, so, so any book seven seven zero four seven one seven. Right, Gally, so. quickly, I still your book. No, he he can do one and then oh, you can do one. Yeah, one. Yeah, one. Yeah. All right. So I mean, just as 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 Gary is. 
is, is um, a sign in for um, for us. Yeah. We will just want to remind you that if you yeah. wanted to read the full story <laughs> of this book, of Gali's Gali's lifestyle, um, life story, is seven seven what seven seven zero. Four seven one seven. Four seven one seven. Yes, yeah. all right. And it's in all the bookstores. Yeah. But we, right. we attempted to really get the man to tell his story the way in only ever Gali Cummins. You will be leaving one do. of the book for the IETV library. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Well, okay. folks, we we getting the message from the from the director Gali. It's been a pleasure seeing you on person for after ten years. You look well for seventy four not out. We want <laughs> to wish you much. all the best, Astel Ren and I. And um, I mean, keep in touch. Yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Man. This I'm has been really Sports Train on IETV. I'm Astin Wayne. I'm Riza Basali. Sports Train, get, get on board. board. See you next time.